Hi folks, I'm at the extreme west wall on my property and Budcat7 and I found this small part of the wall last week. I thought I'd come back here because this stone looks so much like a boat. Um, I don't know if that's what it is, but it sure looks like it. And it's in this part of the wall. It's placed there. And it just looks out of place. Um, I cleaned it off the best I could, but there were a lot of thorns. Looks like a boat. And this is a north-south running wall. It's all covered up, but it's pretty high up on a ridge top. There's three walls on the property. This is the one that's the lowest. To the to the west, eastern wall is the farthest away, and the center wall runs right at the top of the ridge on the property. And they all have these small little cairns in the walls. And this one was pretty interesting because it has this boat shaped stone. And I noticed over here there's another spiral type cairn in the wall with that center white stone like an iris of an eye which looks like an eye I guess there's a big platform down here and a trail you can actually step down on and you can get to see the back of this cairn it's a lot larger looking but carefully built this big platform system here, the wall just keeps going down under the ground. It's been there a long time. I mean, the bedrock stones placed to hold these walls up, you can't even see anymore. And they were very, very, very large. And the walls run pretty much in the same direction. One, two, and three. From here in the west on top of the ridge and then on the east and the one right on top of the ridge has solar alignments in it um, they were watching the stars here and three straight walls in the same direction running along the ridges it's not it's not something you just do willy-nilly I think it's something that was planned here in the northeast. You find all the stonework up above the valleys. There's none in the valleys, it seems. You go down by the river, Connecticut River, you don't see these things. As soon as you get up into the ridges, you find them everywhere. And they're all very similar. But you find different parts of the walls which we like to call cairns with these strange little features like this and they're not a mistake they're not an accident um, and a story becomes clearer as as you look at them and when you get multiple 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 examples of this with the circular structure and usually a lighter color or a round stone in the center um, you start wondering what they are and could it be that it's represents an eyeball an eye that's just one way of looking at it I guess it sure looks like one and if there wasn't so much undergrowth, I'd walk around and show you some more of this wall, but you can see it snakes along through the woods down in there. I can't even get in there. There's so many thorns. These thorns were planted by the dairy farmers so the cattle wouldn't get down into the woods. The walls didn't work for the cows. They were too, they weren't tall enough, but these thorns sure did. But as a result, it kept people out. It kept people out, out of here, 
away from the walls. It kept people away from the artifacts. And it kept people from really knowing what was going on with these walls. I mean, look at these storms. They'll impale you. <laughs> and every once in a while you'll see the wall sticking through. But it runs all along this ridge. We're about 900 feet up above the river valley, which is about 400 feet up above sea level in this area. And these are all thorns. This is how the dairy farmers made fences. They were ingenious. They didn't lift rocks. They didn't even cut wood for fences. They planted thorns, and there they are. No one gets through that. <laughs> We'll go look at one up a little closer. We got the wall down here. Those are how they grow. They grow underground and they just keep popping up everywhere. They're impaling me as we speak. And we're several layers just to combat the sun. And here's the wall right here. And you can see how large it is and how big the stones are. And they're all uphill. I mean, if you're gonna build a wall, you, this is not the place to do it. Well, there we go. Maybe I can get down in here just to show you a little bit before it's fine enough. And you can see how it, the stones just keep continuing down. It's a big wall. Big wall. There's a strange stone. There's a woodchuck hole. And I'm gonna try to find my way out of here. Go have my breakfast. Wall built by giants many thousands of years ago. We have the artifacts to prove it. We just like showing you the walls because they're the largest structures here. And they tell a story. I'm going to go up now. If I can. Find my way out of here. Through these thorn bushes and huckleberries. The thorn bushes which saved Vermont's history, right there. And we're thanking the dairy farmers in the 1840s who put them here. That's where the top ridge is up there. The other one's behind it about 11 acres away. And this field was cleared many thousands of years ago. Dairy farmers came here, they put up their thorn bushes, they put their cows in, they use the wells that are here on the property to, to not only give themselves water, but to give their cattle water. The wells are just as ancient as the walls. They didn't have much to do. And they went, searched for gold up here and found it. Then they went to California because they found lots and lots of it. And they left this area alone. A lot of things had to happen to do that. That's why Vermont is less than a million people. In fact, there's only about 600,000 people in Vermont. There's probably more chambers than there are people in Vermont. Come on, Zora. Okay, I'm gonna sign off. Thank you for watching. This is Jimmy up on the mountain in the wilds of Vermont, showing you the mountain and the giant's landscape. Have a good day.